I'm Stephen Stomsky with Stomsky Racing. On this video I would like to demonstrate our SR065 911 exhaust stud repair kit. The kit works on all 911s up through the 993. The kit comes complete with the fixture as well as all the bushings that you'll need for the exhaust ports on all the 911 heads as well as a set of drill bits, extensions, taps, drill guides, bolts and nuts that you're going to need in order to adapt the kit over to your heads. Now the first step when we work on this in, on these engines is to make sure first of all that you're wearing safety glasses. Especially if you're under the car it's critical that you protect your eyes. If you're working on the exhaust ports and you're going to be working over your head anything comes down and gets you in your eyes wear these glasses to make sure you're safe. If you're working on the car in the on the engine when it's in the car, make sure that the car is secure either on, on jack stands or on a lift. Properly secure the car before we do anything from this point forward. Now as we proceed, one thing you might want to keep in mind is that if anything breaks on the top of your heads, this kit will also work on, on the intake ports, on the bolts for the in, on the studs for the intake ports as well. It's just a matter of potentially having to use a different size, uh, different size bushing. The first thing we do when we approach this engine is we confirm that we have the right size bushing for, for the exhaust port. And on this engine, it's a 3.2 and we're going to be using a 41 millimeter exhaust port. All the engines vary depending upon whether they've been caressed, whether there's carbon buildup, whether there's, they're chunked up or whatever the case may be. Try the different bushings, find out which one is the closest fit. You want a nice snug fit with the bushing as it goes into the exhaust port. First thing to do is confirm that it's tight and if it's not, go ahead and you can do a couple of different things. One is you can wrap it with tape, cellophane tape, masking tape, duct tape, depending upon how much gap you have to take up. If you have to take up a lot of gap, then chances are you probably want to go to the next size bushing. In any event, what I like to do when I'm using using the bushing is I take a piece of paper towel and I lay it over the port and then punch through it to fit the bushing into that port and then if that's a proper fit it usually pro provides a very nice snug contact and that's what we're going to be doing next is setting up setting up the jig. Now the first step in getting the head ready for, for the jig is to actually trim down the broken stud. So what happens on this on this engine, we have 12 perfectly good studs, but I'll sacrifice one in the name of science go ahead and demonstrate the tool here today. Um, the first thing we need to do is to square up the broken stud and to get as close to the head as possible. You don't want to go too crazy, but the idea is if it's square, you'll be sure to get a, a better center drill. And also, if it's closer to the head, it's less that you have to actually drill through to get uh, to get the pilot hole and then then the next size drill through that. So the first thing we're going to do is take something, uh, either saw or in our case we're going to cut, take a cut off, cut off tool and we're going to trim down that stud. I'll spare you the mess and the sound for that and when we tune back in we'll be all flush with the stud. As you can see we've trimmed down the exhaust, the broken exhaust stud or the supposedly broken exhaust stud and now we're going to fit the bushing and as you can see, the bushing has just a little bit of play in there, which is a little more than I'd like to see. Um, so right in this case here, what I'm going to do is just lay a paper towel over and push down. And as you can see, all the, the slop has been taken out of the bushing. I'm going to back out the, the bolt and then place our jig, jig in place. In this case, tighten down the bolt into the jig. And, but before I do that, secure all the parts, I want to make sure that we're centered over the broken stud. And what I'm going to use to start off with is, first of all, this visually check to make sure that it looks right. And since everything's triangulated, it usually is, but you never know what you're working with as far as this stud goes and as far as the ports themselves go. And if something's slightly out, you want 
to take this opportunity to straighten it out. Right, in this case, it looks good. And so that, just to confirm, I'm going to take the drill gig, our drill guide, our guide that we use for the tap. It's the aluminum one that comes in the, t the kit. And I'm going to drop that in place. And the, uh, the idea of this is just about the same as the OD on the stud. And it gives you some idea of the, the position of the jig itself. Now as I secure this, I want to make sure the whole time that we're centered over the stud. And it looks good. From here, we go ahead and we, we put our 3 16 bushing in place. Now you have a choice. The kit itself comes with two, two bits, a 3 16 bit and a 17 64 bit. The choice is, is you can use the bits that are supplied with the kit, which are left hand, or you can use right hand drill bits. Personally, I prefer to use right hand drill bits. And the reason is, is first of all, they're easier to get, but also they usually stay in the in your chuck of your drill uh, a little bit more, a little more readily and uh, and they're also cheaper. So from here we're going to start to drill. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to hit just hit the broken stud just enough to put a dimple in it so that I can back out the drill guide and make sure that we're cutting on the center and we are. So from here, we're good to go. Make sure that if you are using left-hand drill bits that you have your drill set to turn left-handed. If you uh, also, at this point, you want to make sure that everything's snug and that everything's locked down. Also, lubricate your drill bit with a little bit of WD-40 or something like that. Keeps, keeps it cooler and it'll, it'll allow your bit to last longer. Now I've gone ahead and cleaned up a little bit around the fixture because of all the chips and the lubricant that's spraying all over the place. But at this point here we can go ahead and we can take out our our 3 16 pilot bushing and we can check down to see that we're, we're centered and we, we look good. We look just like what we need to look like. And now I'm going to go ahead and put our 17 64 jig in bushing in and lock it down as well. Now keep in mind that the 1764th bit is going to cut much more quickly than the 316th bit did and it's going to want to go in and it's going to, might even want to pull itself in. Be very careful and you want to be careful with the 316th bit as well that you don't want to go into the head too far and actually go into the combustion chamber. Limit yourself. Mark your bit. Be very aware of how deep you're going in. You uh, definitely don't want to over drill. And that goes for the 1764. So be very aware of both as you're cutting. And same thing with the 1764. Use plenty of lubricant. Clear the drill every every couple of revolutions. Pull the chips clear of the, the hole and it'll allow the bit to do the work and it'll make it a much easier, much easier process for you. Now once you've drilled in with the 1764th bit, again, making sure that you don't go too far, and I think I've only gone into the head about uh, 5 eighths of an inch or so, you can go ahead and you can take off the bushings and get a look down into the, into the hole. Um, at this point here, we're kind of hoping that the hole is fairly intact, and if you can see some some of the thread left behind. If, uh, if everything was true, 
chewed up properly. That's the only thing that's going to be left after the 1764 bit goes through is the thread that's in, still in the, in the hole itself, the, in the wall. And as I can see here, you might not even need a dental pick to take it out, but that's the idea, is this point here is to go ahead and clean up the hole a little bit. And if you can, you might go ahead and just have to pull, pull out some of the the remaining thread that's in the hole. I think in this case there's a little bit of shrap, a little bit. Let's see one piece down there. And here's a the remaining bit of the tip of the thread, uh, tip of the stud. And now, just to clean up the hole, you don't have to do this, but you might want to just clean up the hole, chase the hole if you need to. And in order to do that, you can just come along, put in the the red bushing, and that's your that's your guide for the tap. You do probably don't need to have everything as secure it, to chase the threads as you would with the with a bit. So I'm just going to try to catch the threads here, lubricate your tap before you go in. It just cleans up the threads if you need to. And it, you feel it's, at this point here we're using the jig primarily just to keep the, the tap square perpendicular to the, to the head. If you need to, when you're working on the, on the engine in the car, you might need to use the tap extension to get to get into more remote remote spots. But here, let's go ahead and chase it down. It's a bottoming tap, so it'll go to the almost to the full extent of the thread, and then you just back it out at this point here. And in fact, you can remove the jig in this way, backing out the the tap will you'll get any other shrapnel out of the And there you go, perfect threads. Once the threads are cleaned out of the hole, go ahead and lock tight a new stud in place and you'll be good to go. In some cases, however, the, the head's been so screwed up, you're trying to recover from somebody else's improperly done repair or things are just completely messed up that you might want to time cert the head. And we have a kit, our SR066 kit, which is basically an eight millimeter time cert kit, but we include a few extra things with it, including five additional full-length 8mm inserts, and that's the insert that you'll want to use on, on this repair. And in addition, we also include a full-length P-drill, as well as five studs and two additional jigs. You'll use these jigs, these drill jigs, with our SR065 fixture in conjunction with taps and the drills that come in the time cert kit. In conjunction you'll be able to make a very accurate time cert and very easy time cert repair if you need to. In some cases you'll come across a head that's actually had two studs broken. It's not the rarest of things for that to happen. We've developed a new jig that will help you in the process if you come up against this sort of a problem. It's the SR065D drill guide. And it's a D standing for D is in double. And the reason why we call it that is because it has two different ends to it. A 3 16 end for the, the, the drill and then an 8 millimeter end for centering over the broken 8 millimeter stud. The idea here is for you to go ahead and just like any other repairs to trim down the broken stud leave probably about two millimeters protruding from the head so that you can use the drill guide, the SR065D drill guide, to center the fixture over the broken stud. And because everything's concentric, when you come in with the 3 16 drill over the broken stud, it will automatically and naturally find the center of the stud. 
you want to make sure that you do trim the the broken stud down it's just within a millimeter or two millimeters of the head. Usually when these studs break, they'll deflect, they'll bend, they'll they'll not well, not be in a straight line. So you want to clean it up, and the closer you are to the head, better are better off the chances are that that stud will be concentric and centered and predictable as it is closer to the head. Um, in this circumstance, if you're going to use the, the SR065 fixture when both studs are broken, you'll probably need an extra, extra set of hands to help you hold the fixture in place because you're not going to be anchored down on one, on one stud. Once you have started the 3 16 pilot hole, uh, suggest you then at that point take out the SR65D, SR065D guide and go ahead with your regular 3 16 drill guide and finish drilling the pilot hole and uh, finish the repair as you, as you normally would uh, using the 17 64 and, and the tap if necessary. And at that point lock tight a new stud into place and you then use that stud to anchor the fixture in place and go ahead and work on the um, on the second broken stud and that should get you get you to where you need to be. Use a little bit of patience, uh, use a lot of lubrication, flush the hole, clear the hole of any chips, let the drill guides do what they need to do as you're making your repair and make sure that you're drilling on center and everything should go according to schedule and you'll be in good shape. Appreciate you tuning in. See you next time. Thanks.